Hi, I'm Tiffany. Today, I'm going to show you how to work with exponents. Exponents. When dealing with exponents, there's a few things I want to make sure that you know. First, that is exponent itself. An exponent is the small number that is located at the top right of another number. Next thing I want to make sure you know is base. The base is the large number that is at the bottom left of an exponent. The base is pretty much like the normal number, if that makes sense. It's going to look like a regular size number, okay? The exponent always looks small and it's at the top right of the normal number, okay? Here's a little phrase that you hear a lot when you're dealing with exponents, and that is raised to the blank power. That blank can be filled in with any number. This is a way to explain what your exponent is. This is how you would say whatever exponent you're talking about. I'll say this phrase throughout our examples so you'll understand what I mean when I use it then. In a few notes that I want to make sure you remember, any number raised to the zero power automatically equals one. That's just a rule that you're going to have to have memorized. Any number, it doesn't matter if this was a five or a two or a 17, it does not matter. If it has an exponent of zero, don't try to calculate anything. Just know, hey, that's the same thing as one, okay? Except if the base Remember, the base is the bigger number, so in this case, 5 was the base. In this case, 0 is the base. If the base is a 0 and the exponent is a 0, that's undefined, okay? That's a little more that I want to get into for this lesson at this level, but just know 0 to the 0 power is considered undefined. We're not going to really work with that, but it's just a general rule that you want to keep in mind when dealing with exponents. And last but not least, we have 5 to the first power. So any number raised to the first power always just equals the planal base. So again, 5 is the base. Any number to the first power equals the base. Let's move on to example number 1 so we can work with some exponents. Example number 1. I have 2 raised to the third power. This 3 could also be said in a different way. I do want to point it out before we even start. Whenever we're dealing with the 3, we could refer to that as cubed. Okay? So you could also call this example, or you could read this example as 2 cubed. So cubed is a common phrase you're going to hear. Whenever somebody says the number is cubed, that means it has an exponent of 3. Okay, so what does an exponent tell you about the number or what does it tell you to do? I always tell my students that the exponent represents how many times you multiply the base by itself. So that means 2 times 2 times 2. So why did I write 3 twos? Because my exponent is 3. Whatever your exponent is, that's how many times you should write your number being multiplied by itself. So 2 times 2 is 4, and then that 4 that I just got times this last 2 is 8. So 2 to the third power, or 2 cubed, is 8. Let's move on to example number 2. 4 to the second power. Okay. This is the only other exponent that has a nickname. Remember how I explained that an exponent of 3 has the nickname of cubed? Okay, well, when you have an exponent of 2, it also has a nickname. Its nickname is squared. So 4 to the second power could also be said as 4 squared. Now, we're going to solve to figure out the value of this. If you remember from the last slide, I explained that the exponent tells you how many times you're going to write the base being multiplied by itself. So, I have 4 and I have 4. That's it. I'm not going to write it again. Why am I not going to write it any more than 2 times? Because the exponent is 2 and the 
the exponent tells me how many times I should multiply by itself. So 4 times 4 is written 2 times and the answer to that is 16. So 4 to the second power or 4 squared is 16. So you can see that generally exponents are pretty simple, they're pretty straightforward, nothing over the top, but you may have to come to the side of your paper and do two or three digit multiplication just if the numbers are slightly larger. That's the only tricky part. Sometimes when you look into your math book or you're working from a worksheet, you're not going to be given your exponent example so straightforward. Many times your exponent examples are going to look something like example number three. Let me show you. Your exponents are going to look something like this. 27 comma base 3. Okay, this is trying to see if you can understand what really makes up an exponent. That's what they're doing here, okay? What they're telling you is there is a number or an exponent, a base and an exponent combination that equals 27 and it has a base of 3. So I'm going to go ahead and write my base of 3 down and then it's like there's something here. I'm going to just kind of put like a little box or circle here. Okay, so what is here? This is not a zero. This is just a placeholder I'm using. So this whole thing needs to equal 27. So I think to myself, if this was 3 to the second power, or 3 squared, remember we just learned that, that would be the same thing as 3 times 3. Would 3 times 3 give me 27? Let's see, 3 times 3 is 9. So no, that wouldn't. And so now I'm thinking again, hmm, what about 3 to the third power, or 3 cubed, that's the other nickname we learned. That would be 3 times 3 times 3. Um, let's see if that gives me 27. I'm going to write that out because that's starting to get so many digits I can't keep track in my head. 3 times 3, okay, that's 9. We already said that. And then if I take 9 and multiply it by 3, then, oh yeah, I get 27. So yes, it looks like 3 would be my exponent. So if you see an example like this, they're asking for your exponent. What would your exponent be? So in this case, your exponent is 3. Let's move on to example number 4 to do another problem exactly like this one. Example number 4. We have 144, but we started out with uh, an exponent that has a base of 12. So again, I'm going to write just like my last page, 12. And circle here because this is where we're going to figure out our answer. I'm going to draw an arrow so I remember where my focus should be. We're trying to figure that out. And it's got to equal 144. Okay, you may quickly think, oh, 12 times 12 is 144, so I'm going to put a 12 in here. Wrong. Let me tell you why that's wrong. If you put a 12 in here, what you're saying is to do, you're saying, then that's the same thing as 12 times 12 times 12 times 12. And we would just go on and on and on and on. That is not what we need. That would be way too high. 12 times 12 is 44. But if you're thinking 12 times 12 is only two 12s. So that means your exponent should only be 2. Don't let your multiplication facts mix you up during this. Yes, 12 times 12 gives you 144, but that does not mean your exponent should be 12. That would be way too much. Remember, the exponent only means how many of your bases do you need to multiply together. In this case, I only need to multiply together two 12s to get my 144. So the exponent would just be 2. Let's move on to example number 5. Example number 5. Okay, for this one, they want us to compare the numbers. They want us to write in a greater than, a less than, or equal to sign in the box. So what we're going to have to do is solve both sides, solve both exponents to figure out their values, and then write a greater than, a less than, or equal to sign in the box. So 10 to the first power, if you remember I explained earlier 
that anything to the first power is that same base. So this side, we're just going to end up with a regular old 10. This one's already solved. Okay. Now we have 5 to the fourth power. Okay, I'm going to have to work that out a little bit because that means I need 4. Five's written down. So for this one, we have five to the fourth power. So that means I'm writing five fours and multiplying them. Let me show you a trick when multiplying your exponents. You can multiply your first two. In this case, I get 25. And you can multiply your last two. And that's going to be 25. Then you can multiply those two together. What's 25 times 25? That is 625. So, after working out this exponent over on this side, the 5 to the 4th power, we end with 625 here. So, now it's time to write my inequality symbol or equal sign. 10 is definitely less than 625, so we're going to write a less than sign in. If this ever confuses you, which it confuses a lot of students, you can just think of this as being a mouth. A lot of teachers explain this as an alligator mouth. And the alligator always wants to eat the larger number. The larger number in this case is 625. So the mouth is facing toward the larger number. Let's move on to example number 6. Example number 6. I have the exact same situation. I need to solve... Um, an inequality and put a less than greater than or equal to sign inside my box. I have 3 to the 5th power so this side we have 3 times 3 times 3 and remember we need to have 5 threes. So 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 3 here is 9. And then here's the last 3. I'm just going to bring it down. So all of these are going to get multiplied together. 9 times 9 is 81. And then 81 times 3 is 243. Now we need to solve this side. The 15 to the second power means I need to write two 15s because the exponent always tells me how many times. Just like over here, we had an exponent of 5. That means I have five threes multiply. Over here, my exponent is 2, so I have two 15s multiply. 15 times 15 is 225. So I need to write a greater than, less than, or equal to sign. 243 is larger than 225, so that means I'm writing a greater than sign. The alligator wants to eat the larger number. That's my last example. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, don't forget to click like, then head over to supereasymath.com for more math tutorials, printable video notes, worksheets, and more.